Okay, no, no, I got it up. Aha. Okay, I went to his page and apparently it's back up. So ABBA, his personal channel, I'm not very ambitious. Let's see what he has to say about it. Uh, I'm not a very ambitious person. And I think as a man saying that out loud feels a bit odd and there's a hint of shame involved. Well, I think I've just come to accept it. Um, some of you might be confused. You're like, yo, Abba, what do you mean? You got a YouTube channel. You're doing all this stuff. You go on tour. Um, but it is true. I'm not, I'm not ambitious. And I know this because I talk to friends who are ambitious or other creators who are doing stuff and moving on to bigger things. And like, what are you going to do, Abba? What's next? And I'm like, I don't know. I just kind of want to get better at what I'm doing and then just do a lot of the same of what I'm doing. And they're always a bit taken aback and they're probing as to why it might be. But the truth is, I just, I don't, I don't desire just doing way more things. Um, okay, so this was what I thought he was going to say. And I only want to say this because, again, as we're watching this, I want people to understand, like, even for me, I had so many ambitions when I was younger. Like, I had so many dreams of being, like, this great, like, CEO or this, like, of doing so many specific things, of being, like, this icon or whatever. And now I'm, like, I just want to be in love and have a nice life, maybe have a dog, buy a house. I want to enjoy my life. I want to, like, meditate, maybe have a kid. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I just want to have a relaxed life. And... The more ambitious you are, the more career focused you are, those things usually get neglected. As much as these people want to brag about like, oh yeah, I'm home with my kids all the time. Are you? Again, if you're focusing on career, if you're focusing on your job and you're not coming home and tucking your kids into bed, you're not kissing your partner goodnight, you're not like really building friendships, then you know, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it at the end of your life? And I think for some people, it's worth it. And I think for some people, it's not. Like for me, it would never be. But I get it. Even when you listen to like these really, really rich people now, they will say, right, that they are sort of sad that they neglected their kids when they were coming up, but also understand that like, look at all this money I can spend on them now. But that doesn't replace the memories that the kids didn't have with their parents, you know, so again, when I think of a good parent or I think of um, a good partner, I think of somebody who comes home every night. And that's why it's so difficult when you have very complicated jobs like the military or truck driver or jobs that take you away from your family, because it is in one way so important. And like the truck drivers are like the backbone of the American economy in so many ways. And the military is like a really important job. And at the same time, it is so difficult to explain to your kids who don't understand that, yeah, I chose this thing over being there for you as a parent or I, I chose this thing over being there for you as a partner. And so again, when I was dating and I was trying to find my partner, now that I'm married, it makes so much sense that I found somebody who worked from home, who liked being home, who wasn't interested in leaving me, who wasn't interested in doing too many things away from me, which is great. Like some people are like that. But in particular, when I was dating, I did try to date somebody in the military for a second and realizing he would be gone for eight months out of the year on a ship was really hard for me to process. Like how in that situation wouldn't I feel like a single mom? Like how in that situation would I say like, you're doing this for the great, like who is he doing this for? If you choose America over your family, like I don't really get it, right? But I can get why that would work for some people. Now, to be fair to him, he had an incredibly wonderful career ahead of him. He was going to be very successful college grad. Like he went into the military with a 20 year plan in mind. So in some ways he's a great candidate for being very serious about marriage, right? I just couldn't do it. That was my shortcoming. As a partner, I think I would have been a very, a bad partner to somebody who had to be away for so long. Maybe I could do a few months here and there, but realistically, no. So when I hear ambitious, I love my career. I'm ambitious about these things. What I also hear is, I'm not going to be home for my family. I'm not going to be there for my dog. Every time I find a person who owns a dog or has a dog as a pet and they're like, oh, I love having my dog that I never see because I work 16 hours a day. I keep in a kennel all day and he can't go potty. I don't take my dog on walks. I have to have somebody else walk them. It's like, why do you even have a dog? If you're not going to have a life with somebody, why are you having a life with them is kind of my philosophy. But again, Everyone is different and some people have really cool jobs. Like I tell you guys about this couple I met like 10 years ago. 
they both worked for like NASA and the government and they had to live in two different states to do their very cool job. That's great. I'm not saying you should get divorced if you can't be together. I'm just saying that seems very difficult. And I love that they're ambitious, but I am not in that ca category of ambitious. So again, it's not about being lazy. Abba works hard. I work hard. It's about being a specific kind of ambitious, I think. During the pandemic, I think all I did was YouTube and it was extremely profitable. It was a huge growth spurt. I think we went from like 100K to you know, 2 million in the span of like a year and a half. Whoa. That's amazing. But it was also like, I'll be honest with y'all, like the most miserable time in my life. All I did was work. I was working long days. I didn't see friends. I didn't Fair. see family. Uh, and even though I was making lots of money, honestly, my mental was just, it was in the shitter. I believe him. Uh, and then now, post pandemic, I promised myself I'd have a bit more balance. I dancing, skating, traveling, seeing friends, seeing family on a regular basis. And I just, I just feel so much better. Aww. I feel like I look better. I feel better. I am better. My health from the doctor. Can I tell you, when I saw Abba in Miami, one of the things I really appreciated about him is that he did want to hang out outside of work. And he made an effort to listen and to be present and to be active. And it was really, really nice. And I could see him making, we went skating, we went out to eat. And I could see him making that effort, which I really appreciated. Like, it was really, really nice. And I saw that in him. Like, I saw an interest in wanting to live a life instead of just, like, being a content creator. Sometimes when I hang out with content creators, it's really rare. Sometimes you can tell that it's, like, work, 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 which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But it is different. Like we're playing a different game. So I do, I appreciate the ambition I see in some people. I feel that way now. Like I'm working seven days a week. I'm working a very chilled seven days a week. So remember, right? Like I have calls during the day, but not that many. I, um, I've been taking much less calls, focusing on streaming. Uh, I've, you know, I spent the mornings with my partner. We spent time outside. We spent time with the cat. I spent time like doing things I want to do. And yes, there was like a discord event this morning, but like, okay, like I, it's not the same. You know what I mean? I give myself this time with you guys, but I'm not, I could be, I could be streaming for 15 hours a day if I really wanted to like take off. But the truth is, is like, I'm not going to do that. Right. I'm old enough. I've burnt out enough to know like this is good. So I can work seven days a week, but I need to work, you know, in the morning, take a break, stream, take a break. Like that's how I do it. A regular nine to five, a real hustle. You don't take breaks. Even on my stream days, guys, I hope you noticed that on the days where I know I'm going to stream and collab later in the night, I go and take a break for an hour and then I come back to stream. That is me saying, Brittany, we know ourselves and our limitations. We are not going to burn out. We are going to go take a break and come back. And even though it'd be better for your stream career, if you do not have a lag and you do not go away, we are choosing our mental health. We are choosing our stability. We are choosing our joy. We are choosing our hair and our skin. Okay. We are choosing our health. So again, major props to Abba for talking about this because it is true that, you know, if you ride the momentum, you can build an awesome, stable environment for your job, but you also still got to think about the consequences of what that's going to do eventually. So good on ABBA for being self-aware about it. But he's also being honest that you need the momentum. You do need to stream as much as possible. You do need. That's why, like, look, you might disagree with how the streamers do it. Maybe somebody would have told ABBA at the time, like, don't do this. But the truth is, is like ABBA, his channel with Preach would never have grown if they didn't do it. So in some ways, maybe you do it and then you quit. Or maybe you do it and slow down. Or maybe you do it and never slow down. But it's awesome that ABBA did it. And now it's slowing down. Some people never slow down. And usually, like Elon Musk, the consequence is your kids don't want to talk to you. You don't have a stable spouse. And people are always, always fighting you because you've chosen your job at every turn over the people who love you. And I'm really proud of ABBA for not doing that. Perspective is just substantially better. So I'm just, I'm happier here. And the thing is, I don't even have any regrets. It's not even this yeah. part of me that's just like, what if I, but. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel a bit of shame. And I don't know if this is more of a man thing specifically, oh. uh, but there's a part of me that thinks, you know, you're supposed to do more. Mm. You are supposed to rise to the top and do everything possible to get to the top shelf and expand on businesses and invest in that and make sure your portfolio looks like this. And, and I'll be honest with y'all, even though I feel that pressure every now and then on the inside of me, I'm just like, nah, it's not. Yeah. It's not for me. 
Mm-hmm. It's not something I'm proud of or I boast about. It's just what I really feel on the inside. Mm. And I remember watching this Killer Mike interview, and he was speaking to someone else in regards to what everyday people sometimes look like and what they vote for. And he was talking about how like a lot of people are just fine with having their home and their family and their kids. And I remember that was like years ago, but just hearing that, that some reason appealed to me so much. Not necessarily having a farm or whatever, but just having like a really well-balanced life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you know, being in North America, especially being... You know, going to the States a lot and traveling there, you just feel this need to do so many things to accumulate as much wealth as possible, yeah. make money moves or whatever it is. Um, and I just, I don't, I have, I've, I've never been that person. I just wanted to be kind of good at the stuff I do and to be paid half decent. And that's it. Uh, and, and this sounds kind of fucked up, but if my career stayed where it's at or even went a couple shelves down, I would not be bothered whatsoever. Yeah. I feel, no, 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 I feel very similarly. If my career stayed exactly where it was right now, or even got like a slightly a little bit better, not worse. I think I'm good where it is now, but any less than this, and I feel like, eh, I wouldn't feel as secure. But if it was like here or a little bit more, I feel like I'd be good. So I wish, I want to get to his point where I, I say, oh, I wish it was here or a little bit less, but I'm at, I'm at the point in my career where I'm like, I either needed to stay here or a little bit more and I would be chilling. But where I am now is like really comfortable, right? I don't stress about whether or not I'm paying bills next month. So that's really nice. I do stress about like emergencies. So th- I'm at the point where I can't afford to buy a house just yet. And I do stress about like a $10,000 emergency. Like I couldn't pay for that, right? So I would like to be better off in my career I think long term as a gig worker as a YouTuber but I like that I like that you know for me I still have a little bit to go but for him he's like I'm I'm good like where it's at and that's the hope but that's the problem with YouTube is like there's no guarantee that if you reach a certain place you'll always be at a certain place without some sort of hustle so that's the scary thing about the job is that you don't ever you can't ever get comfortable like I remember I listened to Andrew Schultz and Abba and Andrew talk a lot they they collab I was I was watching Andrew Schultz talk about this Schultz he was saying um like I made like 10 million and it's not enough like at the end of the day when you get a certain kind of rich you also have to take care of your family you also have their bills you have to worry about like people who have a hard time so again it's not just you right and that's what I worry about too is like I have to think about siblings who maybe need help in the future so I'm thinking about buying a second home for family because I do have that responsibility or a farm brother can't take care of my parents how do I chip in so farm brother and I are the two kids that are primarily thinking about helping our parents and any siblings that need help so him and I are kind of always talking about like hey what if like so-and-so sibling gets like hit by a car and is paralyzed for life like who do they live with obviously it's me hello ma'am so it's like one of those things where I'm already thinking about it if my siblings ever get into a situation where they need in-home care I would want a second home to put them in and then hire them help that takes money so I'm not just thinking about myself right and then if we have a child and that child has disabilities I want to be able to pay for it so when I think about my career right now if we didn't have any emergency happen I could be living off this forever but the moment there's a huge emergency like a fifty thousand dollar medical bill that'd be different you know now I do live in Europe now so (laughs) I might have a little bit of leeway with that Um, I think one of the reasons that ABBA is older than the average content creators, I see so much ambition in my age rather than his. I mean, he's just 30, right? Isn't he like 31? I feel like 30s is when I see even more ambition in people, more than their 20s. ABBA's younger than me, isn't he? You know, why did you decide to stream more? Do you want to grow on YouTube? Because I wonder if this channel is able to grow much because you um, and us are so specific, not mainstream likes. Yeah, I mean... So ultimately, I obviously do want to be successful more than I am now, but it's not like about being mainstream, right? So I'm not worried about getting mainstream, but what I have to do, okay, this is literally, (laughs) this is so exhausting. I literally, the way to do it just takes time. So I already know what I have to do. I just don't have all the spoons to do it on my own. Like you have to make TikToks, you have to promote your channel, you have to like make a hundred clips, like I don't have the spoons, but I know like the method. So streaming is the first thing I can do that's consistent and gives me the spoons or like I have the spoons for it. The second implement, like the second thing I need to implement is making like TikToks and shorts. So once I get on the TikTok and short train, like I'm going to be chilling, but the streaming is going well. Numbers are up. AdSense is up. People are liking it. 
you guys are a big part of that, please like like the stream. All that stuff is helping. But obviously, like we got to get more eyes on the audience. We have to add in more weirdos to our group. So I'm like, okay, how do I get people who like my content? And the truth is, is that it's a lot of it is stuff that I don't have the spoons for yet, but I will have, I know it's coming. Like I'll have like spoons here and there and I don't have enough money to pay an editor. So I'm not at the stage in my career where I can pay an editor to do it. And I'm also not at the stage in my, my physical health or like my health in general to also do everything plus this job. So I'll get there eventually, but I'm not worried about it. I think in about a year, we're going to be, we're going to be looking at some good numbers. I'm pretty excited. Um, I think streaming five days a week is ambitious. You're a work, you work hard girl, but it's a healthy ambition, not workaholic. Thank you. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to find a balance with it. I just think that's what's key for me is not to panic and say, oh my God, Brittany, if you were putting out seven TikToks a day, like you'd be more popular. Yes, technically, but also I'm not going to be able to do that without burning out. So slow and steady, slow and steady wins the race for me. You know what I mean? That's how it's always worked for my career. Slow and steady. How did you learn that is how it works? Is there a general success YouTube manual or something? There is actually. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> if you guys watch enough of the YouTube how-to channels, like the big guys, like this, like, um, like Colin and Samir are interviewing YouTubers all the time. There are algorithms. There are rules. Listen to Mr. Beast. Like they'll tell you how to do it. Look at, look at Leo Skeppy. Leo Skeppy is popular on TikTok, not YouTube. He has 300,000 followers on TikTok and gets about 20,000 views a video, 200,000 views a video, but he gets millions of views on TikTok. That's why he gets sponsorships, TikTok. So you have to go through the streaming. Lav has like a million followers on TikTok. Papa Gut used to have a million followers on TikTok and he has 24,000 on YouTube, right? But Papa Gut, he's better with AdSense than I am. So he's making more on AdSense than I'm making as a channel with like quadruple his size. I make less money on AdSense than Papa Gut does because Papa Gut is better with AdSense than I am. So we're all playing different games, right? And so you kind of have to figure it out. For some people, they go straight off AdSense alone. Like Kidology goes for more uh, old school sponsorships and AdSense. And I go more for like multiple streams of income. Everyone's doing it different, right? So it's just very interesting. But it's all it's all doable. You just got to pick Mr. Beast, he goes, I'm dedicated to YouTube. This is my, it's, it's really cool. Actually, I don't, this is me nerding out, but YouTube is actually really interesting. And as somebody who never cared about it until recently, I'm like newly obsessed with like, oh my God, like it's so interesting finding a niche and doing a thing and like building an audience. Like it's kind of fun, but it's also like, how do I, Brittany, attract the right people to my audience slow but steady? right? Like I'm pretty happy with things, how, how things have gone. Like I said, I started off at like 30 or no, 12K, 30K, 60K, 80K, 120K. And then hopefully this year I somewhere between those two numbers, I'd be pretty happy. So it's like, you know, it will go up steadily. You know what I mean? If I make, as long as I make like 80K, I think I'll feel pretty grateful. That feels like pretty grateful money. That's like good money, but long-term, you know what I mean? So like the stream, it's free, but it actually makes a difference to YouTube, especially since YouTube. I feel like YouTube has maybe blacklisted my channel a little bit because it's been controversial through the years. But if you like it, if you comment for the algorithm, guys, it literally tells YouTube that people like the content. As dumb as it feels for the user, because I know how it feels, I leave comments on everyone's channel. Go through Kyla's channel and you'll see me leaving comments. I'm just doing that for her algorithm, girl. Like I'm letting people know to watch her because that's all YouTube cares about. YouTube is a computer. It just cares about what the computer sees. And if computer doesn't see comments or likes, it's not going to think people want to watch it. So it won't promote the video. But I've been getting promoted more on the pages because you guys have been liking it and leaving comments. I see your comments. I see you leave the comments for the algorithm and it's working. YouTube is absolutely promoting the videos more. So keep it up. Thank you. I already have more than I could ever ask for. Amen. A lot of the excess money, I either hand it to family or put it to like charities or initiatives that I'm involved in. So for me, it's just like, I, I, I have, I'm good. I just don't want to do more. Yeah. And also I don't envy people. Like this sounds really bizarre to say, but sometimes I look at Mr. Beast or I look at PewDiePie or even like actual celebrities in more mainstream sense like Chris Brown and them and I'm like I don't want that life Same. I don't want to come out of a restaurant and there's a bunch of people with cameras Same. waiting for me everywhere no literally I'm so sorry Abba and I were like twins in Miami not literally but I appreciated his energy so bad because I'm same. I do not sound stressful. I do not want it. I do not want to be famous. Sounds awful. But in Miami, like Abba's like, I don't want to be like, I don't want to go to certain places in town where people might know and like it becomes a thing. Like he's so humble. He's so nice to hang out with. But that's 
same. Like I don't ever want to be famous. I just want to make enough money to support my life and buy and have a dog and buy a house. I just want to buy a house and have a dog. <laughs> like that would be great. I would love that life, please. Thank you. So like I'm not even reaching for the stars here, but I want to be content with my job and my work. And I think that that is the best way to be. I think Abba's like having such a healthy relationship with things that it's hard. I could not, I couldn't, I'm the anxiety of having to deal with like fame and Taylor Swift. Like, could you imagine being Taylor Swift? She can't even go to a friend's dinner party without everyone swarming her. Look at Britney Spears. Look at the way like Kesha and all these people have to deal with their mental health. Look at all these people having breakdowns in public because of the way like fame affects them. Like, no, thank you. You know what I mean? Hi, Jasper. Hi, everybody. Yeah, Abba is humble and happy, and we love Being to see like, it. Your outfit's fit. Who are you with? Where y'all going? And just snapping pictures at me and everything. Like, I just, I don't, I wouldn't want that. No. It's, it, honestly, I, I would throw away as much money as possible to get away from that lifestyle. Amen. But then there's the other side of me. Oh, and then also, like, if I look at Mr. Beast, like, super respectful. You know, what he's doing is unbelievable. And the philanthropy he does, all these things, amazing. Yeah. But it looks stressful like, <laughs> in a way that I don't want for myself. Um, and then I look at PewDiePie who like reached such high levels, you know, doing everything. And you see now he's... Uh, PewDiePie kind of did that by accident, but also he's chilling, which Abba, I'm sure, is about to say. I, I'm i all here for PewDiePie's retirement life. He just wants to slow things down. I'm like, yes. I think I understand or... PewDiePie literally has said this. He wants to slow down. He wants to retire, which he's done. He wants to have a family. He just had a son. Like PewDiePie is living the best life. He does YouTube. He makes money off of it, but he also chills. You, I love PewDiePie's decision in his YouTube career that he's just chilling. You know, it's like my favorite. It's just like what I want. I just want to be able, I think that's what the world would, the world would be so much better. If the ones of us that just wanted a good job and could have a good family could just like come home and do that. Most people, I believe, just want to go to a job that doesn't abuse them, make enough money to come home and have a good life and call it a day. How much happier would we all be if we could literally just go to work, pay our bills and come home and pet our dogs? Like the world would be so happy, but that's not what it feels like. It feels like even if you're poor, you're playing some sort of rat race. Even if you're rich, you're playing some sort of rat race. It's like, that's why I tell you my work it's supposed to help you figure out what game and what bubble you're in and then figure out how to play between the lines because the world is always playing its own game, which is fine. And then you have to play, you have to decide which game you're going to play. I don't want to play this rat race game. I want to play a chill game. Okay. A chill game. And I think that happens because that's your character and you like go for the joy of your, in the strength of your character. Abba's character is so humble. He's such a, like a thoughtful person that it makes sense that he would want a family life over necessarily a famous life or he would want to, you know, slow down or not be as ambitious because it coincides with his character. And I think that's most people I meet are kind of like that where they're just chill. They just want to like have their families come home and relax. But they often feel this pressure, especially as men to like have more and do more and have like my brother will always send me videos of him and his kids and his wife. He's like, man, this is the life. And he's like sitting on a porch and there's just like 20 acres or whatever he has of nature, his dogs and like, you know, maybe a goat or something. And he's just like, this is the life. And it's like, yeah, you don't have to have a farm. But I think a lot of us would just like to come home and kick our feet up, maybe have a beer and just enjoy our life. But we feel so pressured by all of this competition you know what I mean? It's so funny. I always joke. I always tell my partner, my subscribers go down, but my money goes up and I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Why? Like, my money's fine, but my subscribers aren't. Like, my money dipped when I took a break to come here for a month. That That's normal on YouTube. But it's going back up again. But my subscribers are going down. It's so fucking funny. Oh, my God. Yay. Visa, thank you for joining the, the memberships. Yay. Welcome. We're making Dolma this month. So if you want to see a behind the scenes cooking video. That's what the video is this month. It's happening. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, it, there's a lot of – life is so interesting this way. There's just so much pressure we put on ourselves. And then the question, especially coinciding with money and obligation and like, oh, I have to date a guy who makes as much as me or makes more. I have to date a guy who makes, a, you know, $200,000. It's like – do you need to date a guy that makes $200,000 or do you need to date the right guy who will treat you well and do whatever it takes to like support the lifestyle you want? 
You know what I mean? I haven't found my bubble either. If you guys have not found your bubbles, the ones to either identify with holy or the ones, Papa Bless, Papa Bless, or the one that you, um, you can always make your own. You know what I mean? That's a part of it. You know, you can always make your own bubble, but also it's about finding which bubble you're willing to like coexist in. You know what I mean? You know, that's a whole thing. Oh, I love that. We intentionally live very slow. Mm. Some people got expensive tastes. They love to go out and eat expensive hobbies. A nice restaurant is easy. 150, 300 for two, for two people. That stresses me out. Listen, I love me a splurge. I love me a splurge. My siblings and I, we, my family, we love a splurge, but it's like an event. It's not every day. It's not all the time. Hell, when we went to Miami, uh, like six of us went out to dinner and the bill was like, I can't remember if it was $600 or $800. I don't remember. It was a lot of money and I didn't pay it. Like it was split between two people at the table, which was so nice. Like they offered to pay for it, which was so sweet and really lovely. And I just thought that was like, oh, that's so nice that you didn't have to do that. But that was like Miami prices. I was like, oh, this is a splurge. Like I knew I was going to spend money in Miami, but I was like, oh, that's crazy. It was good. It was great food. But I was like, oh my God, like we spending money out here. So like I get it. But also like it is a splurge. It's like an event. You know what I mean? And again, like they split it. Two people split it at the table. I didn't even spit. You know what I mean? I didn't even do it. So major props to them. That was really lovely. Um, But like, you know, it's like I'm OK splurging on money. I spent eight hundred dollars on my wedding dress and I was like, holy fuck. That's like the most expensive thing other than a car that I have ever bought myself. And I don't regret it. I think it was a great decision. Right. But it is one of those things where for some people that's like every week or every month, I could not spend $800 on myself a month. I, what would I even spend it on? Do you have any thoughts on delayed gratification? Um, uh, you know, when necessary. I feel like if delayed gratification has a healthy relationship with discipline, it makes sense. If you're having an unre- unhealthy relationship with delayed gratification where you never actually enjoy your life, I think I could see problems. But usually when I hear delayed gratification, I think about a reasonable and respectable disciplined action and intention with delaying gratification because it's not the right time. I sometimes see people have a toxic relationship with it where they're like, oh, um, I, I shouldn't get that delayed gratification, delayed gratification, delayed. And then all of a sudden 20 years have gone by and they didn't buy the thing they wanted or they didn't get the thing they wanted or they didn't get to experience. So it depends, right? Money ain't bad. Y'all cheese that bag. Just make sure you're also chasing your joy. Chase the bag. Obviously chase the bag. Like make your money. Be stable. I love it. Like like Ariana said, like I want it. I got it. Like have it, get it, do it. Money is great. It's a great tool. But eventually like enough is enough. In my opinion, eventually I do think like it's important to know like enough is enough. Enough is enough if it's like violating the relationships you have with people or if you're choosing it over your family or if your kids don't even know your name because you're working. And it's, you know, it's hard because not everybody has an easy story. Sometimes when you're an immigrant, it's different. If you're in a privileged position, though, and you're choosing that when you could have chosen something else, I think that's different. I hear a lot of stories like Kwame. Oh, my God. I just learned that Kwame and Chelsea Kwame from Love is Blind, he didn't meet his parents until he was like eight years old because they were immigrants and they had to come to the United States to make money. And so his uncle raised him and he finally met his mother when he was like eight years old. That's a tragic story. That is like a tragedy. That is like they didn't have any other choice and they had to do that. That is a tragedy, right? That is like an amazing thing his parents were willing to do, but also what a tragedy, right? That's so sad. But it's when you make the decision in a privileged position that I start to question you. You chose to deny time with your children because of money and a job? Or are you in an immigrant situation, a poor person situation? You're like in a desperate situation. So you have to do this to put food on the table. That's different. But hearing Kwame's story, if anyone in a privileged position told me that story, I'd be like, so you didn't know your kid because you wanted to like live it up in Hollywood, sir? You know what I mean? But Kwame's mom and dad, I guess it was for the immigrate, like they had to do it for money's sake. But again, I just think in this modern day and age, like ABBA and like me, when I'm saying like choose your family, I'm saying like rethink your priorities. If your kids and your wife and your husband and your partner aren't the priority, like make sure they you they know that. 
Because again, like, why you choose? Like, I couldn't. I'm so lucky my dad was home every Sunday. I'm so lucky I got my dad on the weekends. I'm so lucky my dad came home after work and spent time with us, even if it was just a couple of hours. My dad never made us feel, even though he worked all day, guys. He was running a business, right? He worked all day. I never felt like my dad ever chose work over us. I only felt like my dad loved his work and was passionate about it, but he was also passionate about his kids. My dad never made us doubt that he was passionate about us as well. And some parents out here, they're really making their kids like, they're making it clear to their kids, like, I like my paycheck more than you. And I think that's really toxic. What if someone works six months on to make a living, then has six months off per year to fully spend with the family, like a merchant marrier, marine, sorry, oh my God, merchant um, mar mariner or something? Mm. You know, everyone has a unique lifestyle. But again, I think the why is really important here. Like, why are you doing that? Are you doing it because like that's a super passion of yours and you want to have kids? Like why are you bringing kids into it? You know what I mean? How can they consent to not having a partner for six months out of the year? How does that feel to them? You know what I mean? Or not a partner, sorry, a parent. How does that feel to the children? How does that feel to the dynamic? Like again, adults can make that decision for sure. Like partners can consent to that. But how do kids make that decision? How does this affect the kids? I want to know that. Like the question isn't whether or not you should be able to do it. The question is whether or not this impacts the children and if the children are going to feel more neglected. And statistically, like by every study we've done, kids are benefited by having parents at home and having a relationship with their parents. And again, that usually means a physical active relationship. So I'm all about unique relationships and dynamics with your kids. I, I would just ask that question. And I think sometimes people don't. They don't ask the question of how is this going to impact my children? They only think about like, well, I really like my job and I have to have it. And I'm like, okay, that's okay. Just choose your job. But also maybe you have kids that love it and it all works out. I'm just saying the why would matter to me. Vibe with that a lot more than anything else. You know? um, on the other hand, you know, there's a lot of, there's a part of me that's, you know, philanthropic philanthropic I should be saying that while I'm talking about charity but you know you know the same you know that wants to help out and give and I feel this desire to want to accumulate wealth to be able to do a lot of that stuff but the truth is I just I also want to live a life I enjoy and what it brings me joy is to do some stuff I like seeing the people I like like making time forcing myself to do that I've just never done it ever 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 mm -hmm. never so I'm in a good place. I'm not ambitious. I think it's okay. And if you're watching, I don't think you're crazy if you feel similarly. And if you feel the opposite, that's okay too. You know, I think there's different kinds of people for different roles. I remember being in the military when someone once said something like an officer was being told this by a sergeant. But he said, listen, you might be a commissioned officer, but not everyone's made to lead. Some oh. people are made to follow. True. While I'll follow your lead, it don't mean you're actually supposed to be there. And I think for some people, everyone's constantly trying to be the alpha dog and the leader of a pack. But it's like, if you understand social dynamics, not everyone can lead. Yeah. Not everyone's built for every role. And there's nothing wrong with being mm. one of the people who follows or one of the people who leads. Each of those roles are Amen. equally important. Well, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Each of those roles are incredibly important. So, um, yeah. We need ambitious people and we need people who also want to just work hard and do what they have to do and live a good life. So that was my thought for the day. Love it. Yeah, I want to know about you guys. Do you guys feel that pressure to do more, to do many more things? I wonder if that's something that you guys struggle with or constantly have to contend. Okay, thank you. What was that ending, sir? Okay, perfect. I love it. Good thoughts. Um, keeping a parent away from a kid because of lack of money is choosing money over the kid's well-being as well. Well, not technically, right? Because remember, I come from an immigrant bad background. Um, my mom's family, my dad's family, in order to immigrate here, like they did have to separate the families at a time because the legal system doesn't always work the way you want it to. Like they're coming from war torn countries. They're coming from discrimination. They're coming from bad situations. So you're not always choosing money over your children, in some situations, you're like in a real survival situation. I do think if you're like 
let's say like you're a young person and you have a kid and maybe you weren't ready to have that kid. I do think it's like in some ways I want to still party in my 20s is valid, but also like you had a kid. So you need to come home and take care of your kid, you know. So there's like situations where, you know, sometimes like life happens and it's not convenient and you still have to be a parent. But then there are situations where like you're coming from a war torn country. And if you don't escape ahead to make money for your kid, like your kid's never going to have a chance of getting out. So it, again, it's like, I want to be open to the idea of the nuances of the bubbles and that everyone is doing it for the same reason. Some families out here literally ditching their children to go have fun. And I don't get that, right? Like, I don't understand parents who, like, leave their kids with, like, the oldest sibling who's 15 to go, like, hang out at the casino for the weekend. I don't understand parents. I knew a mom who legit left her teenage daughter with her sibling so she could go move up and be with her boyfriend. And I'm like, you still have a daughter at home. You still have a teenager who needs to go to school. You still need a te- you still have a teenager who needs her mom to sign off on things. You can't just ditch her and decide like, I'm not going to be the mom for the last two years because I want to go relive my 20s with my new boyfriend. Like that's not what you're supposed to be doing. But if you're in a survival situation and like this is like, because some people are living incredibly hard lives. Remember how privileged we are. You know what I mean? Like we're, I'm living a very different life than my grandparents had to live. Like I'm not in the same boat as my mom or my dad. I mean, we are not playing the same game, right? Like they came from an incredibly war-torn country. Immigration was totally different. Coming to the States was completely different. You know what I mean? It's a completely different game. So of course I'm going to be open to that for other people. You know what I mean? In my head, in real life I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da